Bulby Mine, a rich source of salt and potash on the northeast coast of Britain since 1968, and the location of the UK's Dark Matter Laboratory, a science experiment first designed to further understand our universe. We're driving into the mine, we've just been inducted. Safety is key. So this is what a mine looks like. Pretty dramatic views there. Bulby Underground Laboratory, that's where we're heading. We will be meeting Ed and Chris, who are technicians, who look after the engineering and the science that happens in that lab. To get to the laboratory, we need to go through the active mine. That requires PPE. Ed Banks kits me out. No phones allowed underground, and I'll see you in five hours when I get back up to the surface. There's no time to be nervous. The fact that we are going 1K underground, just want to try and get this lift. I'm loving this outfit. <laughs> the air that is coming out here is nice and warm because it's actually circulated all the way through the mine and is exiting here. 10 minutes to go one kilometer. I'll let you guys do the math, but that's a long time to be in a confined space going underground. Such a weird experience, this idea that we are going under one kilometer of rock. It's uh, a mixture of emotions, excitement, fear. To think that so far underground, there are resources that we're trying to bring back to the surface and get distributed all around the world. The main driver for us uh, was radiation. So we are currently experiencing a uh, one millionth reduction of the cosmic ray rate that you get on the surface. One millionth. So as in, there is one millionth the flux of cosmic rays here than there would be on the surface. But okay. if you're doing like super sensitive particle physics experiments or related physics experiments. If they are very sensitive, they're gonna pick up background radiation. So if you can remove all of that noise, then you've helped your experiments a lot. It's like walking to the abyss. You can't see where you're going, what's ahead of you. You just have to trust that this little bit of light is guiding you along the right path. Ah, dark matter. Dark matter that way. South mining areas. I love that sign. What is dark matter anyway? It stems from our understanding of gravity. If I drop something, I can calculate exactly how long it will take to hit the floor. There's a relationship between how close you are to the central mass, the sun, and how fast you go. So Mercury, for example, takes about 80 days to do a single lap around the sun, whereas Pluto, all the way out in the distant solar system, takes about 85 years to do a single orbit. Um, and it's a lovely inverse relationship. The further away you are, slower you're going. So if we then move to the next larger scale of a galaxy, we expect the same thing to be true because our equations of gravity should be true on that scale as well. So stars close into the center of the galaxy should be orbiting really quickly, and stars further out should be orbiting really slowly. Um, from observations though, that's not what we actually see. What we observe is that stars further out are going much faster than we expect. Um, so this suggests that there is a whole load of mass in the middle of that galaxy that we can't see. And we call this mass dark matter. It's dark because we literally can't see it, but it's matter because it has mass and it still interacts with gravity. And that's what you've set up in terms of experiments to try and find out exactly what this dark matter is. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So it's not a question of does dark matter exist, it's a question of what is dark matter. So all the stuff that makes up us, you know, normal matter, is only 20% of the mass of these universes. And the rest of that is dark matter, and we don't know what that is yet. So put another way, dark matter is way more powerful than the mass of everything we know. Yeah, yeah, and there's more of it, and we don't know what it is. Down that way, they're not currently mining, but there's a lot of technical stuff going on and they are potentially going to be expanding the mine in that, that, that direction as well. More about that in part two. After a 20 minute walk through the active mine, we arrive covered in salt. That has to be cleaned off before we even enter the lab. With a background in physics, Ed Banks is a facility science technician. He helps to design, build and maintain many of the experiments that are happening here. This is the prototype of a dark matter detector. So dark matter isn't a given thing, right? Dark matter is the name that we have given. It's an idea. Yeah, it's an idea that fills a gap, but it's a very well-reasoned gap. 
why would dark matter particles want to pass through this globe? Because dark matter particles are passing through everything all the time, constantly. There are so many of them in a diffuse kind of cloud around us and the vast majority of the time we pass through it undetected. And it's only that one in a million, million times that it actually interacts with something. So we are hoping to see one of those really, really rare collision interactions within the volume of our detector. There's so much sophisticated like cryogenics, like all, all this really advanced technology. And at the end of it all, it's held together with a bit of sellotape. That's so typically yeah, you're engineering. Absolutely right, yeah. <laughs> Ed showed me around lots of other science going on in the clean lab from another dark matter detector, a tsunami predictor, and bubbling liquid argon to keep their experiments cold. You can see more about them in film two. But first, a quick loo break before meeting Chris Toth. Oh, this is the deepest loo? This is the deepest loo! The deepest loo in the UK and Europe. It's deep. Chris Toth is a facility scientist here at Bulby Mine. He's in charge of ensuring the various experiments are well maintained. I catch him in the act of building a radiation proof protective casing made out of a dense metalloid element called germanium. So a castle for us is something that defends our detectors against radiation. Uh, there are two germanium detectors. So germanium is an element and when you expose it to certain conditions you can make a really good a gamma detector called gamma spectroscopy. Even now, we are radioactive, the labs are radioactive, so these sensitive detectors will see that. So even though we've got one kilometre of rock above us, that's still not it's enough. It's just not enough. That's right, we need further protection. So we need to be nice and clean, yep. make sure there's no dust, no dirt, because that's radioactive as well. Oh, jeez. All material on Earth is a little bit radioactive now from industrial ages and from various nuclear events. And that's a problem for our detectors because we can see that radiation. To us, we, it's almost imperceptible, but those detectors can see it. And ultimately, what does it tell you? It tells us exactly what is inside our sample. So we can put a sample in between those two detectors. Whatever we put in that sample, we'll see what it's made of. Samples of air put into this detector from anywhere on the planet can tell us if there's been any kind of nuclear activity. Ed was talking so much about rock engineers and the geology and all of that. And I was like, when I get back up to the surface, I really want to be able to meet a rock engineer because you must have the most amazing maps just to start with. You'll see the size of the mine, which is that plan. Oh, yeah. Okay. The tunnels that we've been in today are underground, but the tunnels that are built and accessible are under water. But yeah, there's still, it's quite wet and not far at the behind the dark matter lab is one of our big sumps, isn't there? Yeah. It's about two Olympic sized swimming pools a day. I don't even want to think about that. Like when you're a kilometre underground and you've got all that water that's seeping in. Yeah. That would have worried me if I'd heard that whilst we were down there. Yeah. Here we have an example of a true engineer who is doing nothing all day but considering solutions to problems. And that is where engineers are making a difference. Safety is paramount for a mine because things are changing all the time. So we have seismometers scattered throughout the mine, so if, which is geophones, so if we get any loud rumbles or, or noises, we can pick those up, which I'll show them to their office in a bit. So we know that things are happening before it actually happens where the people are. Well, you're the first rock engineer I've ever met. Oh, right. And uh, <laughs> it all started when, with an apprenticeship. And uh, honestly, after being in the, the mine today, it's just been such a magical experience. There is no end to the engineering that is on this site. I could talk to you for hours. It's a great excuse to come back. Thank you so much for giving me this very brief window into your world. Yeah. And uh, it's just an, another example of how awesome engineering is. 